Welcome back to another video. Uh, this topic is going to be all about how to save a drowning person. Now, it's summer 2021 right now and a lot of you are going outdoors and you're going to have a lot of fun and all that. But summer is the worst season when it comes to swimming because there's so many people that don't know how to swim. And unfortunately, a lot of drowning occurs. Uh, recently, I saw uh, a video of uh, a man that tried to rescue a child that was drowning in the waters. And he swam towards the child and he, he, he rescued the child, but unfortunately, <laughs> he ended up drowning and dying, and then the child was saved. This happens all the time, so it's not a shocker for me. And I'm gonna give you uh, my experience on, and my take on how I approach different situations. And there's not just one. So there's not just one uh, be-all solution. Uh, the three variables, first of all, three variables that I look for in any situation when it comes to someone that's drowning are, is there a lifeguard or, or there are no lifeguards monitoring the environment? Okay, so places like public pools, uh, water parks, uh, even like uh, in the summertime at your, your local beach, there's gonna be lifeguards on duty, several of them monitoring the whole environment from left, right, and center. I would let the lifeguards do their job in that situation. So I wouldn't have to worry because that's what they're paid to do. Uh, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're liable for doing something that you, know, you weren't hired to do. So leave it up to the professionals in that situation. You know, Even if I am a lifeguard and there's a lifeguard on duty and I'm not, I'm not working, I let the lifeguard do the job, but I will assist them if I can. Second variable that I look for is, a, is the victim, the drowning victim, a child or an adult. Yes, it's true that when we are in the water, our bodies become lighter. However, uh, lifting or towing a child's body versus an adult's body, it's like night and day. Okay, you will feel the difference in your arms and in your, in, your, in your rescue. It's, it's going to be a lot more work trying to tow a full-grown adult versus a little child, okay? You can pick up a little child with, with one arm in a rescue because they're that light. But for an adult, you, you definitely need both arms holding on to them and towing them to safety. There's also uh, another factor when it comes to child versus adult. Children are more adept to listening to authority, okay? So in a situation where I say, don't fight me, don't grab onto me. I'm gonna go, from, go to you from behind and pull you to safety. A child will listen, all right? But if you tell that same thing to an adult, they might not listen to you. The, the final variable that I look for, the third variable, is whether the, the victim is conscious or unconscious. Now, rescuing a, an unconscious person is so much easier than a conscious person. It's like performing surgery on a patient that is sedated versus fully awake. When a person is unconscious, you can do whatever you like and you can relax. I can relax. Like, oh, thank God that, that person is unconscious. I, I don't have to worry because when a person is, is unconscious, they do whatever it takes to get their head out of the water and that means clawing on whoever's nearby and pushing that person down. They will push someone's head down in order to get their head up. You have to protect yourself at all times. If I'm dealing with a situation where there are no lifeguards, I'm dealing with an adult swimmer, they're conscious and they're being unreasonable, that is the hardest situation to deal with when, I, when you go through this chart. The easy situation would be lifeguards, and it, it's, it's a child, and they're unconscious. <laughs> Let the lifeguards do their job. I'm going to give you now uh, six scenarios, okay, six environments based on these variables, all right, and how I would approach each, okay? So first off is a public pool, okay? First environment is a public pool. You're in a public pool. 
You're swimming in a public pool and you see someone drowning. Like 10 out of 10 times, you let the lifeguard do their job. Okay, you just stand back, give them as much space as possible, assist them if they need assistance, which means, I don't know, calling 911 or alerting the, the lifeguard head, head office, or just, just staying back, just standing back. Because usually people in that situation, they, they, they see someone drowning and they all panic, oh, and they all crowd around, they all look and they want to see, hey, what's happening? What's that? You know, just give the, give the lifeguards room to breathe and let them do their job. Usually lifeguards, how they handle it is, or if I was a lifeguard, I would use my rescue tube. Okay, the rescue tube is that big tube that you see lifeguards carry with them. That is their best friend, okay? That thing can carry a child or adult easily to safety. So they, they put the tube underneath the victims, right? Underneath their arms, in front of them, right? And they just hold on to it like this, put them on their backs, and then they just tow them from behind to the wall, nearest wall, to safety. And they usually do that by holding the victim's armpits or the rescue tube and they perform egg beater okay now if you don't know what egg beater is it's it's just one leg circling the other like this so treading water is the same motion arms like this our feet look like this and we just egg beater and we go back backwards towing the victim that has a, a rescue tube around them uh, next scenario would be a hotel pool now hotel pools usually don't have lifeguards on duty. To protect themselves, hotels usually install you know, indoor pools that are shallow depth. So the water goes up to chest high for an adult. But for a child, chest high is like this. It's usually a kid. Nine out of 10 times it's a kid, actually. <laughs> the kid's gonna be like this, panicking. You just grab them by the armpit and just reel them into safety, to the wall. Make sure you grab their armpit. Always grab their armpit. Never the arm. Never the hand. Never the elbow. Always the arm. Always grab the armpit. That's, that's the secure spot right there. That's a good place to grip somebody if you want to tow them to safety. The arm can slip. Elbow slip. Hand slip. Bicep slip. It all slips when water is involved in the equation. So always grab them by the armpit. Tow them to safety. One arm, two arm. Usually one arm again because it's a child. Okay, now we're getting to some interesting territory. Okay, ocean. Ocean. Okay, now some oceans are not monitored by lifeguards. Say if you're at a private beach, maybe you, you ventured off into like some area that's secluded. There's not many people around. Maybe there's nobody around. Maybe it's just you and you just see someone who happens to be in the water, in the ocean. There's so many variables and a lot of it is a lot of factors go against you because there's no pool noodles, there's no kickboards or life jackets on hand, there's no lifeguard probably in that situation. The best thing you can hope for is that the person is wearing a life jacket when they're in the ocean. So for example, when they're jet skiing or on a yacht or uh, they're doing paddle boarding or canoeing and if they fall off their kayak or paddle board, they can relax with the life jacket on. If they're not wearing a life jacket, oh boy. Yeah, that's, that's what everyone, that's what every lifeguard prays won't happen. But it, it can. So in that situation, you're going in. So I would do a head up front crawl in the ocean. I say, sir, I'm going to come up from behind you and I'm going to tow you to safety. I want you to relax. Okay. Now, you say that clearly to them. Eye to eye, eye in their eyes. If they don't listen, they start wiggling around or they start grabbing you, clawing you, trying to push your head, dunk your head down into the ocean water. You immediately let go, you detach, you even defend yourself. You, know, you stick one leg in front of you. I'm serious, because your life is on the line now. So you say, sir, I'm gonna repeat myself. Don't fight me, relax. I'm gonna come up from behind you. I'm gonna grab your armpits. I'm gonna pull you to safety. Do you got it? Usually they will get it the second time. One benefit to being in the ocean 
is that the water is full of salt. So salt will make your job a lot easier, It'll make the person a lot lighter, make you a lot lighter. So towing a, uh, a heavy adult, maybe who is maybe twice your size, it happens, with both hands in their armpits, pedaling backwards, doing egg beater, it's going to be a lot easier than being in an indoor, indoor pool. Now, if a person is unconscious, your job is to make sure that their head is away from the water. Again, you got to flip them onto their back and then do the same situation. You can pull their armpits underneath the back with both hands, or you can wrap your, your hands, your, you can weave your hands underneath both their hands. So the victim can look like this, you weave your hands underneath, but that's, that's too advanced for you guys. You won't remember all of this. So just grab them by the armpits. Both hands on armpits. Make sure the head is out of the water. That's my take on uh, how to rescue a uh, drowning person. Uh, leave your thoughts, comments down below, and maybe your experience on uh, how you encountered someone drowning. Thanks for watching. My name's Justin. Take care. Bye-bye.